In Russia, they are preparing to send people to prisons and colonies for life for organizing an armed rebellion. The current norm provides for imprisonment only for a term of 12 to 20 years. The State Duma Committee on State Building and Legislation proposes to toughen the punishment. They have already approved the bill and, as it became known on September the 23rd, it was sent to the lower house for reading. It is assumed that the punishment for organizing and participating in an armed rebellion will start from 15 years. Life imprisonment and the fine of up to 1 million rubles are also provided for if the rebellion results in human casualties or other serious consequences. The reinsurance is predictable since the defeat of the Russian army in the Kursk region and the inability of Putin and the authorities as a whole to protect the territory causes outrage in society. The fear of Putin and the Kremlin is well-founded and not only due to the armed campaign against Moscow by Prigozhin's Wagner PMC, which, as reported, actually ended only on August the 23rd, 2023, when Putin's chef and his close associates died in a plane crash. Let us recall that after what happened to Prigozhin, there have been repeated riots in places of detention in Russia. For example, on August the 23rd, 2024, Penal Colony No. 19 in the Volgograd region was seized. The rebels demanded $2 million and a helicopter. Earlier, Indrek Kanik, head of the International Center for Defense and Security, said that the arrests of Russia's defense ministry and military leadership may be related to Vladimir Putin's fear of rebellion. The arrests began in April with Russia's deputy defense minister and now several other people from the defense ministry and the military have been arrested. All are accused of corruption. However, according to Kanik, this is not the main reason for the changes. He believes that Russian leader Vladimir Putin is unhappy with the outcome of the war in Ukraine. Of course, we can't get inside Putin's head, so we can't say for sure. But dictators tend to become more and more paranoid as time goes on, and so it's a very real possibility that he does believe that there is a grouping within the military that is considering removing him from power, and that this is perhaps a step to dissolve the military leadership and restore relations so that there can't even be a theoretical attempt at an uprising, he said. Kanik said that the changes in leadership could have a short-term negative impact on Russia's combat capabilities and give the Ukrainians some breathing space. A U.S. Navy replenishment ship operating in the Middle East sustained damage in an incident which is under investigation, officials said Tuesday. The damage to the USNS Bighorn comes after the oiler has supplied the USS Abraham Lincoln aircraft carrier strike group and remains in the region amid heightened tensions over the Israel-Hamas war and Israel's ongoing strikes targeting Hezbollah in Lebanon. A U.S. Navy official, speaking on condition of anonymity to discuss matters yet to be made public, said the damage happened in the Mideast, but declined to elaborate on its location. A photo released by the U.S. military dated September 5 showed sailors aboard the Lincoln receiving supplies from the Big Horn, while another on September 11 showed the Big Horn alongside the Lincoln. The Lincoln is patrolling the Arabian Sea. The official said the Big Horn's crew was safe and there was no sign of an oil leak from the vessel. Another U.S. official, who spoke on condition of anonymity for the same reason, said the vessel was being supported by private tugboats and an assessment was still ongoing for the vessel. Rumors about the Big Horn's condition began circulating early Tuesday after images posted to a website tracking shipping called G-Captain showed flooding purportedly on board the Henry J. Kaiser-class fleet replenishment oiler. The website described the Big Horn as having ran aground and partially flooded off the coast of Oman. Though the Lincoln is powered by a nuclear reactor, its strike group has vessels powered by fossil fuel that need to be resupplied at sea. The aircraft aboard the Lincoln also need jet fuel. The Big Horn and other ships like it also provide other supplies.
The Luck Brigade of the Ukrainian army are firing D-30 howitzers to try to slow the Russian encroachment in the Toritsk area, as Russian forces advance in eastern Ukraine. Soldiers of the Lut Brigade have been policemen before, but now they have become servicemen. Toritsk is a key city for Russians as an advantage in Toritsk would give the possibility for the Russian army to continue their offensive toward cities of Kostyantinivka and Pokrovsk. Now Ukrainian forces are able to hold the ground and to keep defending the city of Toritsk, according to men on the ground. We are currently in Toritsk direction, Donetsk district. We are working every day. The situation is very tight now, the enemy is pushing constantly, trying to test us, reveal location of our positions. That's why we are staying in shelter, if possible and also we are working against the personnel, ammunition storages and against equipment of the enemy, which is trying to advance in our direction, servicemen of Lut Brigade Oleksandr said.